Hey, what's going on guys? Brett here. And today we're doing something interesting. We're gonna play some disc golf. I'm here at the, uh, I think it's the Wild Horse Park Trail in Mustang, Oklahoma. And it's a beautiful day. It's like 50s, maybe, maybe upper 40s. It's a Saturday, there's no one here. And that's why I love this course. It's pretty close to my house too, or my apartment. So I'll come out here. That's where I play most of the time. I'm not very good, I'm a casual. I played for like 15 years, so I'm like, okay. But in terms of like, like I could never go pro. Like I'm way away from that. I'm just a casual. I've never really worked on my shot a whole lot. It's just me picking it up and whatever. And I'm, I'm just feeling it, right? Like I'm just having fun, feeling it. Um, yeah, let's dive right into it. This is a pretty simple course. There's nine holes over here. And then you cross the path and you have nine over there. They're easy. Like this is a, a confidence boosting course. There's no, no real difficult shots. It's just good practice. Like it's good. This is a great course to just come and throw the disc, have some fun on. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, this first hole, 229 feet par three. Pretty easy shot here. You can see it down in between the trees there. And I just forehand it. We're going with Colossus. Overshot it a bit. All right, hole number two. It is a 230 foot par three. It's kind of similar. You can do a, you can either go, try to go through the trees there. You can maybe see it back there. You can kind of go through the trees. I usually just forehand it over, kind of up over, up over that tree, have it come down, hopefully by the chains. We'll see here. Maybe I'll get a little bit more that way. Yeah. going for it. So hole three, 236 feet. It's kind of through the trees here. You can maybe see, see it between those two trees right there. So uh, it's another four-hander. There's a little, there's, actually you could, you could backhand this too. It's kind of whatever gap you want to hit. But I'm going to try and forehand it, that side of the tree and have it come back. Below, there's the ceiling. Tap it in. Struggling, man. I am struggling. Okay, this one, it's a 270 foot par three. It's a pretty straight shot. You could backhand it with a little, little Anheuser. 
get it to coast in, or you can forehand it. And my forehand game is probably my best game, so I'm just going to stick with it. We're going to keep forehanding it. my comfort zone for birdie shots. But we'll give it a try. You got a couple gaps you can hit. It's 299. And you can kind of see it back, hopefully in between that cluster of trees over by the road there, straight ahead. Now you could, you could kind of find a way through those trees. There's a lot of different lines you can take. I usually hit that big gap over there, backhand it, have it curve back. Let's give it a try. Straight. <laughs> Thought that was gonna curve more. You did throw more of an Anheuser on it. But I'll take that. I don't know if the street's out of bounds. Probably is. Uh, yeah, I'll take a stroke for that one. Drop it on the, on the, uh... actually, that's a good question. I have no idea the tournament rules here. But it's probably out of bounds, right? Oh well. I was out of bounds in that first throw. It's an easy course too, but oh well. We can make it back up. It's just how we roll. This next one's an easy one. We could birdie it. Actually, we should be able to birdie every single hole on this back nine or on the front nine. It should be doable. We gotta step up our game here. We can birdie this one. This one's a 247 foot par three. Got a bunch of trees, so it's a low ceiling. If you can keep it low, it's actually quite a few gaps you can hit to get it there. I usually forehand it. I'm a little more comfortable with my forehand. And uh, as you can see from that last throw, that was abysmal. Got good distance with my backhand. Zero accuracy. my birdie hopes. Say I didn't go for that one. Stable driver. We got this thing. Some Innova disc that uh, is incredibly understable, but extremely fun. We got a buzz. 
And last but not least, the putter. Stud putter. And uh, I'm gonna need that putter to come through here for me. This is that range that somehow I miss when I never should. See what I mean? Bogey? That's somehow a double bogey, right? Because one hit the tree, two hit that tree, three overshot, four somehow missed. All right, all right, I gotta get it together, man. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Not how you start, but how you finish. Plus three, but no problem. We're gonna make it all back up. We get a par three here, 234 feet. Now this one I usually do pretty good on. You can see it, there's that big cluster of trees straight ahead, and you can see the chains just inside there. It's actually past them, but uh, you can see it through the trees there. So we're gonna go for it. It's another forehand, and uh, I just gotta get a little lucky with the bounce. Put it on, the, put it on a hyzer so it curves really hard back right. All right, enough talking, let's start doing. Probably even throw it pretty high too. Snow ceiling. Lob it up a little hazard. Or hazard. in the wind at all and I was throwing into the wind so that thing got a little bit more understable than it normally be can't do it guys I just can't do it I want to but I just can't do it Oh well, we got a par, we've stabilized, we're not continuing our descent into bogey and double bogey territory. That's what we needed. Now we just gotta, let's get a couple more pars, maybe a birdie mixed in, get some confidence back. It's a good one to get a par or birdie on, 229 feet, par three. And uh, this one, same kind of thing, you gotta, you can see it straight on there, kind of hidden behind some trees. Now on this one, you could backhand it, have it float down towards the cage there, or forehand it. I usually, again, I forehand these. Anytime I can forehand, I do. Especially at like mid-range. So let's go for it. really good. Almost. Might be birdie though. It's a pretty straight shot. I backhand this one. The wind, I'm going into the wind. I gotta remember that. Uh, it's straight on there. Kind of hidden behind those trees. Kind of where that red car is to the left. A little bit. Wind's at my back for this putt, and I do a little better with that. You just gotta throw it high and let it drop. High and dead on, and let it drop in. We 
can make it back up. No problem. 240 feet over the hill. Gotta watch out in the wind here. Okay, this next one, 513 feet, par 5. I'll play this one as a par 3 though. That's just how we do it. That's why I played a par three. I ain't no par five. It's a par three if I've ever seen one, boy. Buzz did it, man. That's my disc. Kind of a similar, it's a par four. I think it's about 400 feet. And I played as a par three because this, is, this isn't a par four. 397 feet. Like, yeah, that's not a difficult, not a difficult par three. Let's go for it. You can kind of see it down in the trees there. Try to line it up. Hopefully that pole's not too much in the way. It is. Go here instead. Oh yeah. Try the understable. Wind at the back. That's what that is. The understable. Wind at my back, so I could just launch it straight at it. It's gonna curve right, come back left. Throw it right. Got a blast. It's 400 feet. That's my max. A little higher. A little higher. I was almost it though. But right by the chain, so I have an easy, easy next throw. Thirteen foot par four. This is a par three. You can see it's straight on there. Okay, into the wind, so I gotta be careful. Okay, nice simple second shot. I'm just gonna try to lay it up for a par. I didn't go for this one.
but it's into the wind and it's got a little it's actually uphill a little bit too so uh yeah, let's see i guess i'll set it here not a bad spot so i just gotta blast it that wind would be, would be dangerous. But it's such a far hole that it's still salvageable. So it's actually not too bad of a second shot. Looks pretty level. Pretty straight on. What is that? Maybe 150 feet? I actually have no idea. So that thing definitely came came pretty far left. Goodness, goodness. Okay, that's a tricky, tricky shot. Technically, this is for birdie, but we play part three. want to be uh, on the fence. Sometimes I'm over there. I'll have to keep it low. Winds at my back, so shouldn't be a problem. I shouldn't go up the fence. It should be good. Uh, the hole's right over here. Actually, maybe I'll show you guys, because you can't really see it from the tee. It's straight back there behind that biggest tree. Got those three trees to the right. I aim for those. If my throw's right, it comes in. Anheuser backhand straight at the chains there. Let's see if I can nail it. Probably not. I'm gonna go for it anyway. And uh, sometimes I get too much of an Anheuser and it goes over the fence. But I'm trying to Heiser it. I don't want to Anheuser it. Heiser it. Two hundred sixty-seven feet. Uh, forehand, this one you can see it right between those trees there. Straight on. Put that tree there. <laughs> What's that? Right when he went to throw, the wind started blowing. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Have a good one.
sink some of these. Call it a day. was a successful round feel pretty good about it uh, this place is packed now I got here at the right time because look at this we got groups there the back nine was loaded with people but uh actually there weren't that many people it's like two groups seemed like a lot of people though uh, yeah I feel pretty good about today I really got owned on three of the holes was that uh, I had those two holes in a row and then one of the holes on the back nine number 10 completely destroyed me because I had a couple missed putts there that was brutal but all in all I feel pretty good about uh I mean I love this course like it's just a fun little course except for the wind you really there's no messing this course up and of course as I say that today I messed it up but yeah I'm gonna be playing a lot of courses here I figure I'll go ahead and record it because it's kind of fun like it it's a little weird walking around recording yourself in public but I imagine you get used to that pretty quickly. Uh, the Colossus is what I, I usually rock. Uh, this thing's pretty over overstable. You can see it's a minus one turn, which is, I think that's pretty, pretty. Uh, it doesn't want to turn over too much. Minus five is like really turnover. Minus one, just a little bit of turnover. It's pretty stable. So uh, that, that's like perfect for Oklahoma wind. Even into the wind, you can kind of, there's enough wiggle room that it, if the wind's not going to take it all that much it will a little bit but not all that much this disc i don't even know what this is innova champion but it's like unmarked and i found it i didn't buy this one i found it uh, <laughs> i should probably have called that number to give the guys disc back but you know it is what it is hey if you're out there and you're seeing your disc man hit me up uh in the video and i'll find you and give it to you got the buzz here i love this buzz that's a great mid-range uh, getting in the wind though it's brutal and I don't know about this putter I need a new putter this is a star stud it works but it'd be nice what else we got here we got a I found this disc doesn't it look brand new somebody probably threw it once and I probably thrown it more than whoever lost it through it it's actually kind of funny because I threw my disc on one hole had a different course in town and uh, I thought for sure I'm like oh I'm never gonna find that disc because it was on a heavily wooded course and it was one you have to shoot blind like over some trees and you never find your disc if you get a bad throw I had a bad throw I threw it too high wind took it I'm like oh I'm never gonna find it and that was my that was my Colossus that was my favorite that was my favorite disc and it's broken into like I would have quit disc golf had I not found it but oddly enough I found this disc looking for my Colossus it was just sitting like right in the open kind of away from everything though so nobody was really looking way the heck out there I saw that disc I'm like, oh sweet that's my disc and it, the same color you know and I'm like wait that's an Invictus what on earth is an Invictus so yeah I'm gonna have to start practicing with this I don't know I guess it's more of a it's even it's actually more stable than the Colossus but it's a 10 on the speed so I guess it's probably not gonna throw quite as far 175 what is this one uh, one 76 I actually don't know I don't think it says yeah, anyways I'm gonna have to try it out uh, I've actually got oh here's another disc I actually bought this disc this is a boss pretty pretty it's actually the same um, stability as the Colossus the speeds a little less in the five what is the five uh, it's basically the same as the Colossus except for this is the champion and I don't know, I haven't quite nailed this one yet. Um, yeah, I, it seems like I consistently throw the Colossus better, distance-wise. So, but yeah, I got a ton of discs back in the trunk of my car, too. And I've, like, bought maybe three of them. Everything else was found over the years. And my battery's about to die. Good timing, guys. Take it easy. Later.